Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. We're back. It's June 20th and we are doing our Thursday live stream. And so today we are going to be continuing to work on the snow bear shot that I've been working on for the last week or so with you guys. And uh, I've almost got it all in between. I was going to do some uh, coloring of a character of the, of the polar bear lair, but I think I want to get these uh, last few in-betweens done, so I thought we'll do that first. Let me give you a little shot uh, real quick. If you can go to yeah. the screen there. Go to the screen there. The screen. The screen there. Hold on. I'm going to open this up. There we go. And uh, it's going to play a little bit slow. Uh, it's actually playing very slow. But you'll at least get a sense of all the in-betweens that are in there. We've gotten, we did quite a few with you guys, and I've done, uh, I did quite a few more uh, on Wednesday and, uh, and this morning. And he's just walking through, it looks like he's like really, hmm, really tentative. He actually, <laughs> he's walking a lot faster than that when it plays back at the right rate. But uh, it's, it's playing back slow right now. But anyway, uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. And, uh, and I'll be answering some questions with you guys. Um, this is something I really am wanting to get done. You can see him walking along pretty good there. And uh, this is going to go along with several other shots. I'm actually uh, putting together a teaser for Snow Bear uh, that we're going to release hopefully in the next week. And uh, this is part of that teaser. And uh, so I'm hoping you guys will like it. Um, let me hit that there. Everything's moving a little bit slow. What's going on here? There we go. And that's not working there. Hmm. Houston, well, we have a problem. Yeah, Houston, <laughs> we have a problem. We do have a problem. Let me see if this will work. That's working. And we are... Oh, I know why. It's on the wrong layer. <laughs> Let me hit something here. Let's see... Okay, good. For some reason, it put me on the wrong layer. Let me see if that works. There we go. We're back. And so usually, uh, uh, or usually, as usual, I've got, I'm feeling a little out of sorts today. I feel like <laughs> I got okay? caught with my pants down. I don't know. It's weird. I started at the gym this past week. I'm, my, my muscle head is all muscly. And M muscle head? My muscle head is all muscly. M muscle yeah. head is all muscly. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, hurting. Dustin, Dustin Blaze here. Yeah, so there's Hi. Dustin. Dustin's here, and then as usual, we've got Nick Birch, uh, my business partner. He's in San. My, my glasses are all askew. Look at that. My glasses. <laughs> yeah, nice and crooked. Glasses are all askew. But we got Nick Birch, my business partner. He's in Sarasota, and uh, he's going to be helping to answer questions as well. And like I said, I'm going to focus on trying to get this done. And then I'm going to do an export so you can actually see it play at the correct speed. So why don't we just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to, uh, th this is being done in 4K, by the way. I'm animating this in 4K. And uh, what's great about that is that I can blow it up really big and uh, and do the details that way. What did I just do? There we go. You did something. There it is. I blew it up. Oh, I know what I did. Blew it up too big. There we go. Turn that off. And there. Whew. Things are rough, man. There we go. I'm going to jump over here and grab my 2B pencil. This is just a, a lot of people ask me what, what brush I'm using in TV Paint. First of all, this is TV Paint software that I'm working in. And, um, and I'm just using the 2B pencil. I really like it a lot. I like it a lot. A lot. And, um,. It looks, you know, when you play it back, it really looks like I used pencil. So that's what I'm using. So I'm just all of these, uh, all these in betweens are being done on thirds, meaning I've got to put two drawings between each key, and they got to be spaced exactly a third uh, from each other. So the first drawing will be a third closer to the first drawing, and then the second in between will be a third closer to the last drawing. Yeah, that makes no sense to you guys, I know. <laughs> but it makes total sense to me. What was the thinking behind the composition on this scene? Uh, putting the bear's animation uh, in on the top third? 
Yeah, well, I'm gonna have, I wanted to have room for a uh, title underneath. So that was one of the main reasons. Plus I didn't want it to be really even and I wanted it to feel like a lot of snow and him being crowded at the top. Um, just helped with that a little bit. And um, matter of fact, we're gonna have some more shots where um, he's a tiny little character down on the very bottom of the frame and it's going to be all sky and snow and mountains to, to you know anytime we compose a shot like that you know especially something like this one here it's, to, it's really to emphasize the the emptiness of the place and, and and once again in this case I'm also anticipating a title so Is that was my thinking there that's what was your thinking yeah is doing thirds the same as favoring? Well, no. Well, doing thirds it depends on if there's another if there's another in between in there. Like if I if, if there was um. Like right now, I'm doing thirds, but I, I'm doing two in betweens between each uh, key. So there's a key here, a key here, and then my in betweens is one third here and one third there. So that creates evenness across. Now. If I had just one in between, so if I had a key here and a key here, and then I put uh, a third, or put a, an in between here on a third, meaning a third closer to here, then that would be favoring this key. It depends on the number of uh, in betweens in there. I know it gets it, it gets confusing to explain, uh, but it's it once you see it. If I showed you on a chart, which I, well, actually I can show you right here. So if I have a key here and a key here. And I need to put two drawings in between on thirds. One goes here, one goes here. That indicates they're all they're all one third apart from each other. Okay, so that's all even. Now, if I only have the one in between, but I still have it on a third, like so, then that favors obviously that drawing. I don't use that very much because we don't really see it. Um, maybe in big, uh, big movements, but it's not something we really see a lot. So um, I'm only using thirds now because of um, because all you know. The, there's enough space between these that if I just did it on halves, it would be too fast. So I need those extra drawings. Have you ever done any uh, seminars in Chicago? Seminars in Chicago. I have not done any seminars in Chicago, but um, but I'm willing to try. Willing to try. I'm willing to learn. <laughs> but we uh we we actually are going to be doing more around the country. We'll be doing more in Europe as well, in Asia. Um, the that actually brings me to a good uh, segue to our master class that's coming up. Um, we're doing a master class here in Orlando, August third and fourth, and um, it's selling pretty well. So um, if you want to come August third and fourth to Orlando, the tickets are going pretty quick, and um, we might sell out. We have a limit of 300 uh, seats, and um, we uh, it's successful enough that we want to definitely do it again in other parts of the country and possibly uh, Asia and Europe and that sort of thing. And uh, we've really enjoyed um, the trips that we've done, and would love to get back and see more of you people. But um, if you for the seminar itself that we're doing now, the master class, August 3rd and 4th. Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, that's my website, Creature, uh, CreatureArtTeacher.com and uh, backslash Orlando 2019 and you'll see the uh, whole bunch of information on there. And if you are a student or a teacher, you can get up to $50 off uh, your tickets. YouTube question, hey Aaron, I've been wondering what opacity do you have your brush at in Photoshop when coloring? I love your work, you're a huge inspiration to me, thank you. Um, I change the opacity all the time. So um, 
if I'm doing really subtle shadow, you know, shadows and that sort of thing, or reflected light, I'll, I'll knock that opacity way back. If I'm just laying down a local color, a base color, then I'll go 100% on it. So I'm changing it all the time, uh, depending upon the need that I have. There we go. So right now I'm just, this is about a hundred, it's going to be, end up being about a hundred and probably about a hundred and sixty drawings for this shot. And uh, it's a nice little introduction. This is actually the shot when we first see Snow Bear in the film. This is the first shot you see him in the film. In the actual film, this is I'm, I'm not only doing this for a teaser. This is for the actual film as well. Uh, what are you going to be serving for lunch at the seminar? Uh, we, what am I? Gonna, we're going to serve <laughs> um, probably uh, a um, selection of different sandwiches and that sort of thing. What am I going to be serving for <laughs> lunch at the seminar? Well. It'll be edible. <laughs> It'll be food. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have, we really thought that. Maybe like whatever the hotel, whatever the place gives us. The hotel? No, we're not saying. We're, oh, the not seminar is at the, at the repertory theater. Oh. Uh, no, we're we're bringing in lunch. Bringing in lunch. We're okay. catering. We're having it catered. So right here, I'm just, he's slowly starting to turn his head. There's a certain uh, spot in the shot where he stops and pauses and he looks back. And it's like, he, you know, the whole intention of this is he's kind of looking around. He wants to find company. He's lonely. And uh, he's just wandering this empty landscape by himself, a lonely bear. How do you tackle animating uh, with different timing charts for different parts of the same character? Well, you, you do just that. You know, when I'm animating and I have different timing for different parts, as I'm moving forward, I keep track of the timing. It's, it's hard to explain uh, without showing. Um, but, you know, like this, this front leg, I might have have it do something different. Might I might have it in this shot might reach out really quickly and be on a different timing, whereas everything else is uneven timing. And so I would chart every the whole body for that even timing, and then I would create a separate chart for the front leg shooting out, you know, doing whatever it's doing. Somebody added to the uh, lunch lunch comment. Dustin will be, will be making his famous peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I <laughs> uh, didn't know you had famous peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I, I didn't know that either, but <laughs> I'm really good at making mac and cheese. There you go. <laughs> we'll just make it just a giant cauldron up of nothing but mac and cheese. <laughs> So here, I'm just continuing him across. Go ahead, Dustin. Did you have any part of making Brother Bear 2? I did not. Um, early on in the process, while we were ma actually making Brother Bear, they started the process of planning out Brother Bear 2. Um, and they came in to sit in on some of our meetings, our story meetings, to see kind of what the world was like and who the characters were and they consulted with us but after that we really didn't cross paths again. I've actually never seen Brother Bear 2 if you can believe it. Yeah I saw I saw it uh, once I think it was on Netflix for a while and um, I don't I don't know if it's still there though. It was all right. Twitch question. Do your kids also draw? A little bit. You draw, Dustin? A little bit. A little bit. 
I used to draw uh, a lot in high school, but not not as much anymore. Not not like what I do. No, 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 not not your level. No, no, I don't mean level, but you don't like you just don't draw the same amount. Why well, not? That's why my kids don't have the same interest in drawing as I do. That which makes us individuals. I mean, I'm personally more into like graphic design style style art, and also photography. That I've gone into that lately. I want to go back here because one thing I forgot to do. Bring that shoulder blade down. Quick question. Hold on, I got to get this. There we go. There's that shoulder blade. Hey, YouTube question. Heron, have you ever thought about owning your own animation studio or, or it wasn't really in your interest? It's not in my interest. Um, I really love what we've got now. We've got, you know, four guys working together, you know, with our business. And, um, and that's great. Uh, but, you know, I'm not, I just don't want the responsibility and the, and the headache, to be honest with you, of a of an animation studio. There's a lot of overhead and uh, to keep it rolling, you know, takes a lot of money. And so for us to keep it nice and small and do doing what we do, um, it's a lot uh, less nerve wracking. Let me put it that way. It's a lot easier to sustain as well. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some guys out there that I know that are really doing it. You know, they're, they're doing a great job of it. And uh, Dom Carolla and Premise Entertainment, you know, they've had a studio for years since the studio. And uh, since the animation studio at Disney shut down, they've been going strong for the last, oh, shoot, what's it been, 15 years now? Give or take. Yeah, so, and uh, those guys really know what they're doing. Dom does. And uh, so, hopefully they're listening today. You can hear me. If you're listening, Dom, you're doing a great job, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing but, uh, a great job. Yeah, those guys are great. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, that's not, it's not something I think I can handle. Uh, it's not my forte, man. Have you ever worked on any projects with Floyd and Norman? <clears throat> well, we've worked at we worked at Disney together. We were there at the same time. But um, and I've met Floyd many times. We we know each other, but um, but I've never really worked on any projects with him. And uh, as a co-director of Brother Bear, uh, did you have any say in the music, or uh, you were in charge of the animation only? Just no. wanted to let you know that Brother Bear's score, score and soundtrack is my top favorites. Oh, that's great! No, I had I had a say in everything, not just the animation. So I had a say in you know the actors that we picked and directing the actors and the score, the music. I worked with Phil Collins closely for four years. Um, Mark Mancina was our composer. We worked closely together. Um, no, we all worked together. And uh, so it worked, it worked out great that way. Twitch question. What are your thoughts on Disney's straight-to-DVD sequels? The quality always seemed to be a lot lower. Well, they were lower because they were, there, was, there was only a fraction of the money and time spent on them. So, yeah, they were really just pretty much a money grab um, because, you know, they were really hot at the time. And, uh, this, or, you know, the story, whether it be Lion King or... Aladdin or whatever, and you know, DVDs and VH VHSs before that, were the you know that was a great way to to make a few extra bucks. The problem with all that was was the the CEO the well not CEO but the head of that division got a lot of accolades for having such a successful division because. Our films were doing so well when it, when they would put out a sequel, you know that that division would do really well because it was riding on the coattails of the success of say Lion King or Aladdin or Mulan, and uh, wasn't a great guy. 
bad karma. I won't go any further than that because it's bad karma, but he put out a lot of bad karma, but I don't wanna I don't wanna add to it. <laughs> what is the first step of when you're animating a dialogue? When I'm animating dialogue, the first step in that is actually to listen to the dialogue over and over and over. And I want to listen to it enough that I can actually see the, the character acting it out in my head. And then, uh, then I start thumbnailing, meaning I start you know, drawing little sketches to figure out the poses for, uh, that are going to happen in that shot in the dialogue. And then, uh, and then I'll sit down, and um, and key it out. I'll I'll take the key poses, and I don't draw actually draw the dialogue yet. I just actually just find the pose of the character for that for you know the different phrasing throughout whatever he's saying or she's saying, and then I just watch that and make sure that I'm hitting the right choreography, and then from there. Then I'll add the details and add the mouth shapes and all that, and that's how I get the dialogue. It's a multi-step process, but it works if you take your time with it. Uh, did you ever draw comic strips? I never did. I never did comics. Um, I know a lot of guys that did, but it was never anything that I was super interested in. Um, if I wasn't doing animation, I wanted to do wildlife art so that's where really where I put a lot of my time if I wasn't animating an effort sorry for this I know it's common but why you left Disney and don't get back why did I leave Disney I left Disney for personal reasons um, but and I it was I wanted this a new start in my life and um, and Disney was, you know, Disney was great. Uh, I just, um, I needed a change in my, in my career, in my life, and with my kids and everything else. And so I decided to take off and go back home, back to Florida. I was in California at the time, and just start over. And uh, I was just, you know, I was pretty much, I was 40, 41, 42 years old at the time. And uh, just decided it was time to make a change. So that's what I did. You know, that's that's the thing. Every you know, especially young people, they really have this idea that Disney, Pixar, all of those studios, that that's the end all. That that's you know, that's where you got to get to. Um, and then there's nothing after that. And the the truth is, uh, there's a lot more out there than just those studios. And um, you know, I lived by that for a long time. I didn't think that there was anything beyond Disney for a long time. And, uh, uh, and I just figured I would be there my whole life. But um, when I hit a certain point in my life where I knew I needed to, I needed to make a change. And, um, and it really forced me to see the world beyond Disney. And it was, it, it was great. It really opened me up and uh, uh, it, I don't know, it, uh, it matured me. And I'm, it's, it, was, it was probably the best decision from a career standpoint and a life standpoint, probably one of the best ones I've ever made. I'm super happy doing what I'm doing now, more happy than anything I was doing at Disney. And I'm not working on the big projects, but the way that I get to share and, uh, and just doing, you know, being able to work with my son on a daily basis and, you know, all of that, that was all stuff I couldn't do when I was at Disney. Matter of fact, there were, you know, a lot of times I didn't see my family you know, very often. I'd only see them for an hour or two a day for months at a time. And uh, now I get to see my family as often as I want. And it's great. It's great. It's great. Did you meet Phil Collins when working at Brother Bear? Oh, we worked very closely together. Yes, many times. We, we did a lot of stuff together. Yeah. It was and, even the moment that freaked out your sister. Oh, yeah. We were, uh, we were, um, Phil needed to write some new lyrics for a song, and I was at home, and, um, uh, I was putting in some wood floors in my living room, 
and uh, we were working away. We'd been working for the weekend, and my sister was over, and uh, the phone rang, so I asked her to get it, and Phil was actually calling because he had written some new lyrics for the song, and he wanted to go over the lyrics with me. And so she answered the phone, and she was a big Phil Collins fan. And so when she answered the phone, she she asked who it was, and he said, and she came running into the living room all freaked out. It was pretty funny. Would you ever team up with your brother, who is an animator, uh, to work on a project? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we've we've actually teamed up in the past. We worked at Disney together, <laughs> so we worked on a lot of movies together. He worked on Brother Bear, actually. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd work a team up with Travis, for sure. Uh, the person that asked about the uh, Chicago seminars. Yeah. I asked earlier about the Chicago seminars because I am a uh, part of an artist group that sketches at the Natural History Museum. I also work with a couple of local colleges and hit me up if you ever head out this way. Well, that's funny. I used to, um, my wife, um, at the time, uh, before we were married, she went to the Chicago Art Institute and um, she was working at a magazine at the, uh, in uh, this is Dustin's mom in Chicago at the time and I flew out to Chicago uh, to visit her uh, after my internship with Disney and uh, and while she was working I spent almost every day at the Natural History Museum pretty cool uh, YouTube question, have you seen or heard of the Pixar animated short Kit Bull? It's a 2D short. I have not. I have not. I'd love to see it. I think this question uh, is uh, towards me. What was it like growing up and your dad having a big part in animating these iconic films that are uh, a majority of, of your peers have seen and loved. I really like it. It was it was a really cool experience, and uh, I've actually had a lot of people come up to me uh, and be like, "What's what's it like to have your to have a dad like this?" I'm like, "He's my dad." <laughs> <laughs> like, I always thought it was really cool. I'm really proud proud of all the stuff that he's done and uh, what he's doing now. And um, thanks. Yeah, it's fun to talk about it every once in a while with my friends but I was still a jerko strict dad like any other dad eh. you know how to lay back and you know how to you know when to when it's appropriate to put put the foot down put the hammer down put the hammer down yeah Do you have advice for a BFA graduate uh, going into the animation industry? What sorts of things would you or other professionals in the field look for in a portfolio? Great art. You know, that, that's the thing. A lot of, I'm, I'm glad that you got a BFA. Um, just know that the BFA isn't going to get you, isn't going to open the door. What's going to open the door is the good work. And hopefully, the fact that you got the BFA is going to, is telling me that you've spent some time putting together the work so it really comes down to making sure you've got great work to show because that's what's going to open the door for you and, uh, and whatever the discipline is that you're going for whether it be animation character design uh, location design prop design uh, whatever it is um, you know make sure that the work really speaks for itself and uh, and put your best work forward. The very best stuff you've got. That's what's going to do it for you. What is BFA? Bachelor of Fine Arts. Ah. Uh, you worked with Elton John as well? Uh, I did, very briefly I worked with Elton John. There was a short time that I was um, that I was uh, directing Nomeo and Juliet. I directed it for about seven months and then I chose to leave it and go to another project that I was developing and so it was handed off to Kelly Asbury who finished the project but um, 
Elton John was doing the music at the time. It was actually a project that Elton John brought to Disney. Uh, would you do another acting for animation in your future courses? Yeah. Um, if, uh, as soon as we, if I get something more specific, you know, I'll, we definitely, we're always looking for new subjects to talk about for animation, definitely. Have you ever tried 3D animation? You know, I tried learning Maya, and um, that lasted about three weeks. And my responsibility, I was directing a movie at the time, and my responsibilities for the movie got such that I wasn't able to really focus on it. And so I never really did much more with it. So no, I never have. The long, that's the long answer. The short answer is no, I've never, never animated in 3D. What advice do you have for someone uh, that has a concept for an animated series to pitch to a network, like Netflix, Hulu, uh, Nick, yeah, etc. You want to put together a, a really good package, <clears throat> and um, you know you want all the characters represented. You want uh, so at least several episodes written and boarded, and uh, moments illustrated. And if you can have some animation done. Um, that would be even better. Matter of fact, if you could have a pilot, if you could get a pilot animated before you go, um, then that's even better as well. But not you don't necessarily have to have that. And um, but a lot of sample animation and and um, and script. Twitch okay. question: Do you think Brother Bear underperformed at the box office? And if so, why? Uh, I don't think it underperformed. I think it performed right where I think the quality. I don't think it was the greatest movie. If I could go back and do it again, I definitely would. You know, I'm I'm proud of it as a first film that I've done. I think some of the stuff we wrote was a little bit on the nose. I do. Uh, there's something Nick always says. Nick always felt like it was mismarketed as a as a comedy um, rather than have it play more like a, a coming of age story, like Lion King. And, uh, and I do think there's something to that. Um, I always meant for it to be more of, you know, of a serious film with comedy elements rather than people thinking of it as a comedy. And I think the, because comedies were doing well at the time and our marketing department, which all they ever do is follow trends. They never, they never create trends. They just follow them, which is really frustrating. Uh, they, tried to they tried to market it as a comedy because, you know, comedies were doing well at the time. And... Uh, but I think it could have done better, and I also think that it was released for some reason. Dick Cook, uh, who was the uh, the head of D Disney Pictures, um, didn't want it was it was coming out on Halloween night, which was a Friday, and they didn't think it would do well, so they decided to release it on a Saturday. If so, I've never even heard of a movie being released on a Saturday, and they did that, and to this day, I still don't understand why they did it. Um, we actually would have been number one in the box office that weekend had they had they released it on Friday. Um, but there's you know there's any number of reasons why it underperformed. But um, you know it's definitely I I'll be the first one to tell you it's no Lion King, um, but it's a movie that I'm proud of, and uh, um, and I think if it would have been marketed a little differently, I think we could have gotten a few more dollars out of it, and if the comedy was. You know, the comedy that we did write, you know, if it was a little better, I think it would have done better. But, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. But, for like I said, for a first film, I'm, I was happy with it. And, and uh, I'm proud of it. Autumn Beverly asks, Aaron, can you adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> do, 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 do oh, by the way, I... it still did. I mean, the movie did uh, over $250 million worldwide, which isn't... You know, it's not huge, but it's not it's not a failure by any by any means. Considering you know, we brought the we created the movie for eighty six million, and we made two hundred and fifty six million or two hundred and fifty over two hundred and fifty million. So it's done well. Do you have any tips on learning to see in three D when you were drawing? Uh, the only tip I can give you is to continue drawing and practice at it. The more you practice, the more you'll you'll see it. It'll click something will click and then all of a sudden you're going oh okay now I understand and that's how it was for me you know with uh, with animation let's say 
um, for me, it really, whoops. Um, for me, it really clicked. Like a few weeks into learning it, because um, before that, I, I could not, for the life of me, figure out animation. I just couldn't figure it out. And a lot of animation, obviously, all of animation is, you know, not only is it the emotion that you have to worry about, but you got to think in three dimensional terms. And, um, and I wasn't, I, it wasn't clicking for me. And then all of a sudden, one day, it just did. And it was because I was persisting it, I wouldn't stop. So I've got his head off animating off the screen. So that's a that's a plus. So now I don't have to worry about that. I can get through this a little bit faster. Twitch question. Oh, that's an old question. Have you ever animated at thirty or sixty frames per second? I never have. No, I've never animated at that at that frame rate. Uh, I think I would go bonkers. Just doing twenty four frames a second, I feel like I'm going to go out of my mind sometimes especially have to do something on ones now animating at 60 or 30 frames a second but doing it on twos i think would be interesting i'd like to see what that looks like man it is hot in here it's hot in here it's hot in here <laughs> Bring that knee up a little higher. What is your opinion or advice on having your own legal contracts written up by a lawyer or a freelancer artist? Uh, this topic gets uh, overlooked in almost all school ac academic programs, and graduates uh, have no idea how to conduct this conversation with clients. Uh, your thoughts? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. This is something we've talked about lots of times. My friend Ronnie Williford and I, Ronnie especially, we both believe that there should be a class in college just on the business of art, the business of illustration, the business of animation, whatever it might be. Um, no one's taught that. And you're thrown into a world where, especially if you're working at a studio, it's nothing but business. You know, first of all, you should never go into a, a, a job, whether it's a freelance job or a studio job, without some kind of understanding, whether it's a contract or some kind of agreement. Um, you just don't do it. I, I every, for, oh geez, for, uh, for the first 15 years that I worked at Disney, everything was under contract. I, I had a lawyer and we negotiated contracts. I don't think you need to go as far as having a lawyer. Uh, I certainly, you know, after a while, I decided to, to negotiate uh, on my own. But, um, you know, once I understood uh, how to do it. But even that, just for your own protection, you know, that aside, for your own protection, you don't go, especially in freelance world, don't go into it without a contract. Um, Nick actually specifically taught a class on contracts at Ringling and they have a business of art major that I did know that I, I knew that they had a business of art major at Disney or at Ringling but my thing is I think it should be taught to everybody not just as a major I think everybody should at least have a class so that they understand it totally totally have always felt that way and actually Vedanta uh, just said you should do a class on business of art actually there you go Nick there's our next class. Nick's going to be teaching our next class, the business of art. I think that's a great idea. Nick, teach the thing. <laughs> Nick, do the thing. Nick, teach the business thing. Uh, will you one day make an Indian ink brush for comic artists that feel like a uh, India ink. India. Well, he brought out, out as Indian ink. Yeah, I'm just saying Indian I'm correct. Ink. I'm correcting him too. Um, like a uh, Kura take brush pen. K U R E T A. -K I don't know. Kura. Let me see. What's it say? Say it. Uh, 
spell it? Could it take a K U R E? Is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. How's that for know. an answer? I don't know. I don't know. It's a Dale. Yeah, there's a, there's definitely some brush pens that I want to uh, uh, brushes that I want to create that emulate different brush pens. Um, it's just one more thing on the list I got to get to. Nick says, I agree. They do offer it as a minor as well, but I think it should be across the curriculum. Oh, yeah. For sure. According I mean, every every kid going into the art field should understand that, you know, unless you're making art just for shits and giggles, you should understand there's a business to it. You know, so many people, you know, would get so bent out of shape that, you know, when Disney's you know, making these films for the dollar grab or whatever they say, well, of course they're making it for a dollar grab. They're a business, you know. <laughs> Everything we do outside of, you know, if you want to make uh, make your living at, at art, you know, if that's your job, then there's a business to it. And uh, it's, you know, it's that's what we do. According to you, uh, what are bad habits of an artist which will stop a person from improving, even if the person is practicing every day uh, narrow-mindedness because I was gonna say the only way that you can't that that you don't improve is if you don't work every day but if this person is working every day then I've come up I've come up with a lot of young kids that I try to explain to, that are only drawing anime or only drawing manga or whatever and that's all they're drawing and they they want my opinion and I say well it looks nice but you know at your age I would like to see you broaden your horizons and try some other things and I always get pushback and um, and that's fine but they'll never grow as artists that's all they'll know and uh, so you know young kids you know kids that that feel like they know it all and aren't open to suggestion those are those are people that well not just kids but people those are people that are not going to improve and I've seen it a hundred times don't ask me for my opinion if you don't want the answer that's another thing I have so many people that ask me for an opinion and then I give it to them then they argue with me <laughs> those are always fun yeah What was a show or movie that had uh, that had animation that you found inspirational? Oh, um, wow, that's a great question. There's been a, there's been a lot of a lot of the classics, the classics for me, you know, the films that were done in the third or the forties and fifties. Those were all very inspirational for me. You know, anything that was animated by the nine old men, Bambi. You know things I like that. Say it. <laughs> well, they were though. They were. Oh yeah, they were. You know that's 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 you know they hit home for me. Those were very inspirational films. I, you know, I use those. I look at those as a standard to try to match up to. Yeah, I always like the um, the animation for Snow White. Yeah, well, there you go. Because Snow I, I White do. was the very first, was the very first, like real animation. Yeah. It wasn't the first real animation. It was the first feature length animation. Yeah, that, that's why I meant to say. Yeah, that. and it was. Um, and I think it was like the first time they uh, portrayed human beings in in animation because before, like, the cart. They were they were cartoons like they're very like very loosely animated uh, characters in these short uh, in these short clips, yep. but Snow White took the animation to an, to the next full length feature level. Well, do you know what else it was the first of? As far as a feature film, first colored. Yep. Yep. That's right. First color film. For, you know full-length feature film and it was animated pretty cool huh yeah. Disney was always Disney was always on the forefront of technology in those days Fantasia was the first stereo film 
Oh, stereo like the surround sound stereo? Yep, surround sound, sound, surround sound, surround sound. Surround sound, surround sound. Man, my hand is sticking to the glass. I'm sweating <laughs> so much. Uh, what software are you currently using? I'm using TV Paint. TV Paint software. The software that's fun to wear. <laughs> fun to wear. When I was a kid, we had, uh, I didn't have them. I was a little bit after my time, but when I was a, when I was a teenager, they came out with these underwear called underroos. I don't know if they still have them. But my brother had underroos. He had Incredible Hulk underroos. And their tagline was, it's the underwear that's fun to wear. <laughs> really? Yeah. The underwear that's fun to wear. Uh-huh. That's pretty funny. And they're all superheroes. Mariana of uh, comment I agree with uh, Dustin. Although new Disney movies are great, I wish great. we can great. I wish <laughs> we had more cowbell. Uh, I wish we can have more in the style of Snow White, where the characters look like actual adults and not overgrown two year olds. <laughs> yeah. Well, Snow White looked a little young as well. And they also had the like, uh, the twenty like the twenties like, like the late twenties early thirties style, filming of where the characters looked heavily makeup. <laughs> oh yeah. But Snow White had a lot of live action reference. Oh yeah, in there, a lot of rotoscoping and, but they learned a lot from it. That's what's so cool, you know. The nine old men, those guys, that were that were starting out then, they really learned a lot. They were pioneers of this art, you know? Do you think Walt Disney would have liked The Lion King? I do. I do think he would have liked The Lion King. You know, Lion King was, you know, I think Walt liked big, dramatic, coming-of-age stories. And, um, not that I, you know, obviously I didn't know him, but I do think that he would have, I think he would have liked that. So many people ask me, have you ever met Walt Disney? Walt Disney died in 1966. I was born in 1968. Mm -hmm. You met and hung out with Roy Disney. I did. I did, we lass. Lass? Yeah, I called you a girl. Don't you mean we laddie? <laughs> I'm 43 and I'm almost done with my master's degree in 3D animation and VFX. You're never too old. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, how That's do you pretty feel cool. How do you feel about... I like that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Disney making live action films from animated classics? As long as they're good and they have something new to say, then I think that's great. You know? Um, a lot of people are thinking that The Lion King is shot for shot. I hope it's not. If it's shot for shot, there's no reason for it. But um, I don't think it's going to be shot for shot. Um... I think it's been long enough that it can be reinterpreted. Um, I, I'm i all for it, to be honest with you. I'm personally kind of thrown off by it because I've grown up with these animated films and they're very extremely sentimental because of dad working on them. And so it just kind of feels weird seeing these uh, movies turn to live action. And well, get over it, son. <laughs> That's my personal personal thought. Yeah, I mean, if it's if, if to me, it's a whole new reinterpretation, which I think, or you know, reinterpreting you know that material, which I think is kind of cool. 
So here he is, walking along, all in between. But he's not moving at the right pace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it really quickly and show you guys what the proper pace is supposed to be. So here I go up and I go export to, I'm going to call this test 5, and I'm going to uh, export to AVI, which is just a, a, a film format, and I'm going to export it right here. It's going to take a few seconds. Are you going to watch um, uh, the Lion King movie uh, next month? I'm going opening night. Nice. I'm super excited to see it. Have you got anything on your end, uh, Nick? Uh, I see you have it. It's the same question up there. I didn't know if there was something else there. We're about halfway exported. Uh, do you feel the, stor the stories in Disney uh, have fallen a bit since the old days? No. No, if anything, I think they've gotten better. You know, I think Disney was a lot more hit and miss back in the old days. And I think, uh, um, I think they've gotten better. You know, in the in the the eighties, they really hit rock bottom. The seventies wasn't bad. Sixties was hit and miss. I think fifties and forties, I thought was great. But I don't think the nineties uh, was was probably the time when it started coming coming back. That's when everything came back. And I thought our stories in the nineties were as good, if not better, than a lot of the stuff that's ever been done. I think it really measured up well. Um, let me show you here real quick. Uh, desktop. Oh, that's big. Can you go to the whole screen? To the other one? Yes. There we go. So that's playing at the right pace. So there we go. Let's play, let it play again. Oh, I gotta do this again. There we go. I'm just doing a preview. When was the uh, Black Cauldron? Was that the 80s? Yeah, that was 86, I believe. So that's his walk across the screen there. And now we need to color it. I'm gonna open it that way. There we go. There we go. How's that? Is that better? Got kicked out of chat. <laughs> YouTube, do you watch art documentaries? What do you recommend? I don't watch art documentaries, really. I don't watch that many. I can't think of any that I really watch. Um, I don't know. I don't have any. Uh, there are a couple. Actually, there are a couple I recommend. There was one. Shoot. It was just a documentary on drawing. Now, I, I knew the title, and now I can't remember the title. There was one that I watched that I really liked on BBC... Um, where they, I know it sounds weird, but they profiled Prince Charles and how he, he loves to draw and paint. I know it sounds weird, but the man can really paint. And the collection that the royal family has of art and how art education and drawing and painting has been such a big part of the royal family history, uh, it was something that I never realized, and I found it really interesting. And so I would recommend it. I can't remember what it's called, but look it up. It's a BBC production. And, uh, and it's profiling Prince Charles and his paintings. I have a question so here. There, for, oh, I'm sorry, sorry I'm, I'm just real quick. So there is the bear walking across the screen. And I'm going to start painting him now. Uh, and real quick, a YouTube question. If you wanted to learn how to draw people, should I learn anatomy or figure drawing or gesture first? I think you need to learn all of, all of it. You know, it's not one or the other. It's not, you know, you can, you can learn all of it. You don't have to focus on one and then go to the next thing. You can learn gesture drawing while you're learning anatomy. So, you know, you should immerse yourself in all of it. I have a question of one of my students. Uh, yes. What would be your thoughts on a Brother Bear live action adaptation? I think it would be super cool. Actually, I think Brother Bear lends itself really cool to a CG live action type film. Uh, Disney will never do it. But I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to turn this on real quick because I think 
I might be out of sequence. Oh no, we're good. I'm gonna blow this up really quick. Are you going to paint all the drawings of bear? Of bear? Of bear? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am actually. Um, I'm gonna paint all of bear. <laughs> first thing I gotta do, I'm gonna blow this up. I'm gonna find the right color. Now, uh, TV Paint has an option where you can uh, fill. Uh, where you can fill a um, a character, uh, uh, just touch and fill. Uh, it works great um, if you're if you're cleaning up, if your line is cleaned up. Uh, I'm keeping my animation rough, and so as a result, I'm just painting uh, uh, just a regular animation layer underneath. That's what I've decided to do. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that color right there. Boom! That's the color I'm going to grab. I'm going to come down here, actually I'm going to go here, come back here, and actually I'm going to zoom out there. And I'm going to come back, come back on here, sorry, and I'm going to just see that's what Every once in a while, I'll hit the wrong button. I need to redo this again. There we go. I want to grab that color right there. Hit OK. And then fill. There we go. Just like so. Now, I want to change... pencil that I'm using, or the brush I'm using, I've gone over to the felt tip now, and that's the one that I'm going to use, uh, when will you be doing your next uh, drawing or painting courses? Um, well, we've got a new course coming out from Tim Hodge, <coughs> actually, uh, in the next couple of days and um, in the next uh, week or two actually and uh, I'm actually starting a new one uh, coming up soon I'm not sure when yet uh, but I'll be doing a new animal course on uh, birds of prey uh, we've got actually quite a few things in the in the hopper and uh, so it's just I, all I can tell you it's soon very soon you still practice uh, gesture drawing? I do. I still practice gesture drawing. Let me turn that off. There we go. That feels better. I still practice gesture drawing. I, um, matter of fact, every time I sit down to do any animal drawing, that's gesture drawing. Uh, what animation of Disney movies have you worked on? Oh, what animation of Disney movies? Mm -hmm. Well, I can give you the movies. Uh, I worked on... Uh, the very first thing I ever worked on was... Um, an oh, animated short, Roger Rabbit animated short, called Roller Coaster Rabbit. Actually, I'm going to turn on this background so I can see a little better. Turn this all the way up. That way it tells me if I'm going outside the lines. And you can see I am. So the first one was Roller Coaster Rabbit, and then the next project was um, Rescuers Down Under, where I was an animator, uh, and then I want, went on to Beauty and the Beast, and then we did Aladdin, and then we went on to, um, let me think here. Uh, after Aladdin, what, oh, we went on to uh, The Lion King, and then Pocahontas, and then I worked on another one, another Roger Rabbit short called Trail Mix Up, and then I went on to Mulan, and let's see here, see, I'm 
trying to talk and figure this out at the same time. It's not working out. Mulan. Then I, I directed Brother Bear. And then pretty much, that was pretty much it after that. I, I helped develop a few projects, but they never got off the ground. And then I went off uh, and worked for another company, Digital Domain, for a while. They went bankrupt. And then I started this business. I've been semi, you know, I wouldn't call it retired because we're working, doing what we're doing. But compared to the workload that I had before, I feel like I'm semi-retired sometimes. It's been great. It's been great. It's been great. Uh, YouTube question. Have you tried out Apple's iPad Pro and Apple Pencil? If so, what's your opinion on it and say compared to a Cintiq? You know, uh, compared to a Cintiq, they're completely different, I think. Um just the interface and everything. I don't know. I, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I, they're not, I shouldn't say completely different because obviously you're drawing on a screen and that's the same. Uh, but they just feel different to me. Yes, I have, by the way, worked on it, obviously. Uh, but um, I, I, um, I like a Cintiq better, to be honest with you. Uh, but um, I, you know, for something being so portable the iPad Pro is really cool I find though and I think it's just because of my age and I tend to be more old school I find that when I leave my Cintiq in the office I go right back to my sketchbook I mean I've always intended to use my iPad Pro but I've never it's never really caught on for me and so I tend to just use pencil and paper when I'm not at my desk working digitally. What brand of uh, gouache oil acrylic paints do you use? Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton? Yeah. I use Windsor Newton for everything. Actually, Liquitex, I think I use, I use it for acrylic. Let me find my acrylic paints. Yeah, I got a lot of a liquid, Liquitex I use. I really like, I like them, uh, because of the consistency, they're, they're kind of semi-liquid. Um, and then uh, and then Goldens for acrylic. We've got a lot of Goldens as well. Show it again. Goldens. Golden for acrylic. And then also Liquitex. I'll keep all those behind me. <coughs> Uh, I'm currently 38. Uh, will Congratulations. Will I be too old to work uh, for Disney in the next five, ten years? No. You're never too old. We've got, you're a young guy. 38? No. Uh, uh, you're good. To, you're still good to go. If you can do the work, you're still relevant. Bernie Matheson, he's still working there. His first movie was Cinderella. Didn't you have a hand in Dumbo? Dumbo? <laughs> you must mean the new Dumbo. Maybe. I hope you mean the new Dumbo. Because if you mean the old Dumbo, how old do you think I am? When did Dumbo come out? What was that, 60s? 1940s. Oh, 40s. I thought it was 60s. No, it was 40. 46? Look it up. I think it was I think it was 46. I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong. October 23rd, 1941. 41. Wow, I was way off. I was way off. Uh, were Pocahontas and Lion King made at the same time? Pocahontas and Lion King were being made at the same time. They weren't released at the same time. Their schedules were slightly off, so I was ab able to actually go. I was able to actually work on Lion King, and then uh, finish on Lion King, and then I jumped over and helped. I jumped onto the character of Pocahontas and uh, joined Glenn Keane's crew there and animated on Pocahontas for almost a year. 
animated the character Pocahontas. When are you going to make a uh, How to Draw Deers and Antelope? Never. <laughs> uh, how to Draw Deer and Antelope. That's actually a really good suggestion. Um, I uh, Everyone asks me, when are you going to do it? I don't know. I, I don't have a plan. But uh, it's a great suggestion, and I will definitely put it on the list. Deer and Antelope. We've been talking about doing like North American big game and African uh, big game as well. So like deer, elk, moose. Yeah, exactly. Definitely what makes some certain people happy about uh, courses on mooses. Mooses, eh? Mooses, eh? Remember when that used to be rec requested all the time? <laughs> Hey, can you Every, draw the mooses? Can you draw a moose with a friend with a friendly little mousey? <laughs> so you can see, uh, this is gonna have an overlay over it, so we don't have to worry about all that jittering that you see. And this is blown up really big. There's our overlay. So now if I, there's our first few. That's what he looks like, and we're gonna go in there and and. Uh, where is that? Do you see that flicker on that eye? Right there. Got to fix that eye. Make a show. I just made it so. There we go. I'm actually going to leave the overlay on. That way I can see where I need to color. How far I need to color. What makes a good model sheet? And what should you include on it? And uh, what not to put on it? Well, a good model sheet really consists of a lot of different views from different angles of the character. The whole model sheet, the, remember what the reason for a model sheet is. It's to show other people what the character looks like. And for, for 2D animation, it's to show other people how to draw the character, right? And so a good model sheet is going to show the character from different angles. It's going to show the character or how to draw the character. Um, it'll show proportions. You know, we had model sheets that, that were just showing the character itself. We also had model sheets that were instructional model sheets, drawing or, uh, sheets that, you know, showed, you know, how many heads high is this character and how many, you know, how wide are the eyes and that sort of thing and all the little details that go into what to think about when you're drawing the character. Uh, what's your favorite HB grade of pencil? I like using... A anything uh, anything two B or softer. Anything soft two B or softer. So three B, four B, five B, it's up to six B. What's your opinion on the meaning or lack of meaning behind Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> uh, I think Alice in Wonderland was just a big trip. Uh, I don't have an opinion on it to be honest with you. I've never really thought about it. Uh, but I think it's nice and trippy, which is kind of fun. I just think it's a, you know, for kids, it's just a fun piece of animation, a fun story. For others, I think it's a, you know, whoever did it was tripping. <laughs> you say you don't but use But it's really about a girl not wanting to grow up, too, I think. <laughs> sorry. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. Um, you I say you don't you I'm not, I'm, I'm done now. Are you done now? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um. Go yeah. Right, yeah, go ahead and talk. <laughs> no problem. You say so you don't ahead. use... <laughs> no problem. Chatting up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you say you don't use black in your uh, illustrations. Is that a new thing, or, uh, is, or is this something that you've never, ever liked black in your drawings? It's not a new thing. Uh, I, it's something I've always... I stopped using black when I went to art school and realized, you know, black really used the wrong way black can really kill an image and uh, I mix my blacks especially in traditional art I don't carry black the blackest thing I'll have on my palette that I use sometimes is uh, Payne's gray which is kind of this blue gray black um, but I tr try to mix my blacks uh, that way I can control the temperature because even black has you know there's warms and cools to black it's rare that we get something so black that there's no color to it. And um, and so 
and with that in mind, um, when you use regular black, it, it tends to kill any of the color that you might have in there. So I try to create it with, with color. You know, alizarin crimson and ultramarine make a nice black, or a, you know, those types of things. You can get a nice deep dark brown, rich brown with olive green and alizarin crimson. You know, lots of those are the things I think about. And this is uh, from earlier. Uh, speaking of deer and such, uh, we love to uh, would love a how to on uh, drawing antlers in various directions. I struggle with them horribly. Oh yeah, well that's that's just figuring out the you know how they sit in space, and yeah, that's tough. That's really tough. But once again, like anything else, it's the the more you do it. The better off you'll, you'll better you'll get at it. What's the funniest cartoon that made you laugh out loud? The funniest cartoon that made me laugh out loud. There's some great Warner Brothers stuff that I just I I can't. I, I've been watching it for forty years and I still laugh just as hard as I did. You know, and I'm, I'm probably old fashioned, but you know, Bugs Bunny or not Bugs Bunny, but um. Uh, uh, Roadrunner, Coyote, and Roadrunner still, still make me laugh out loud, and actually, uh, Bugs Bunny and the Abominable Snowman. Oh yeah, that just kills me. I can't stop laughing when I watch that. Daffy Duck, Daffy Duck is Robin Hood. Zoinks and away! <laughs> Zoinks and away! Zoinks and away! Remember that? I I honestly don't remember that particular oh scene. Oh my but. gosh. <laughs> Daffy Duck and, and uh, Bugs Bunny, I think, is some of the funniest stuff ever done. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. But Daffy Duck as Robin Hood, I just... It, it's so <laughs> funny. There was one that I remember, uh, it was it was of the uh, from the Baby Tunes. It was like Baby Looney Tunes. Uh-huh. And um, it was a it was the baby uh, Daffy Duck, and like he and his mom are in this elevator, and he's like, "No, my elevator." He messes around with the buttons, and apparently there was a burglar that got onto the elevator, and Daffy kept some messing with the controls. Elevator go up, elevator oh, stop. Go oh yeah. <laughs> elevator go down, <laughs> elevator stop, and every time he go went up or down the. Uh, the burglar would hit the ceiling or hit the floor. <laughs> and so you just hear that big thud every time he says, stop. That's awesome. And I, I remember seeing that when I was like, I remember you at talking least five about five years it. old. Yeah, you used to laugh. You, like uh, you were crying, you were laughing so hard. Oh, uh, it still makes me laugh so hard. It's <laughs> one of my favorite scenes. It's just the timing between the stop and the thuds. Like, if you can time the the audio like when it comes to like the talking and as well as the actual yeah. sound effects right after the, those are always awesome those always make me laugh so hard I got a YouTube question why did you animate the bear fully early on in the sequence if you knew a bunch of the drawings showing uh, snow bear walking are most obscured by the foreground because that's a good question uh, first of all I'm not I want to have the ability to move the background around if uh, the overlay if I decide to but also, I want, even if there's a little bit of movement in the back, I want it to feel realistic. And the only way I'm going to do that is to under, is to be animating them fully. And I just said, all I did was hit the keys. And, um, and so I wanted it to feel like, even though you're not seeing his legs, you can feel him walking. And, uh, and, it, and it animates right up off, you know, from behind the, the overlay. And so that's the reasoning behind that. So the show that I was talking about was, uh, uh, some people corrected me here, uh, it was Tiny Toons, and it was not Daffy Duck, it was Plucky Duck. Plucky Duck. Plucky Duck. Yeah, it was still a really, really funny scene. Yeah. I think the first time I saw it was actually at a daycare when <laughs> my mom used to drop Asa and I off for when she would go to the gym. Oh, yeah. In fact, I think uh, the daycare was in the gym. I oh think. yeah, I know. I know which gym it was. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
That's pretty funny. So this is the process right here, coloring them in. It's it's uh, not super difficult, and um, uh, we're gonna you know this is pretty much how he's gonna be handled throughout the film. And uh, later on, there'll be shots where I add shadows and uh, other you know his nose will have a certain color. Close-ups will have you know in extreme close-ups will have more color separations. You know, keep in mind this is going to be really shrunk down small, uh, so I don't want to need I don't need a whole lot of detail on here. I think the only other color that's going to be on here is the nose. Are you going to be adding shadow later on? Not on this one. No, it's all flat light. There's going to be snow overlay as well. Matter of fact, I wonder if I can do that here. Let me do something here. Where do your fascinations come from of uh, drawing animals? I've always felt a kinship to animals. I've just always felt that, and um, so I don't. I don't know. I, it's just something that's always been a part of me. So here he is walking along. This is playing very slowly, way too slow. But you can see, see, you can see I've already done all the keys, and you can see the keys are catching up. So I, what I'm doing now are all the drawings in between the keys. It's kind of a funny way of watching it. <laughs> like you can see the lag. Yeah. Uh. Would you be able to do a Looney Tune cartoon short, or would you get in trouble for copyright? I'd be in trouble for copyright. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I could do something on my own, as long as I wasn't trying to sell it, you know? You could do something like that, but um, I don't know that I would want to. Yeah, what... Isn't there like another way where you can do like if you got special permission from from them to allow you to make a, a Looney Tune short? Um, yeah, I mean you, you can do anything with permission. Yeah. So uh, I just don't think that's something they would let go. That's right. a that's a whole matter of fact. They're they're bringing back the Looney Tunes. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah. Did you meet Chuck Jones? I never did meet Chuck Jones, unfortunately. I would have loved to have met Chuck Jones. He was one of my heroes. I really would, would love to have. Ah, keep going. Even that, that a slight bit out of the line. See on this on on this cartoon, I'm not gonna worry about a little bit of line crawl here or there, and but when you have things pop that's like light and value like this pop outside the line, it gets distracting. I uh, want it to be a little bit more exact than that. Can you talk about how to draw good, accurate cast shadows? Well, the best way to do that is to really observe how light is cast on a care on, on an object um, and it's it really comes down to perspective too. look at the path that the light is taking look at where the character is and then follow a line from the from the source of the light past the character and you'll discover where the shadow is going to hit the ground and and that sort of thing um, cast shadows are really based upon where that light source is obviously and so you want to you want to be able to trace that light source, and you'll get a sense of the perspective on how it's going to hit the ground. For instance, if I have a character standing here like so, and the light source is here, if I draw a line this way, it's going to come down, and the cast shadow will be all the way out here, like so. Have you done any mural artwork? I have. Matter of fact, when I was uh, second year in college, I was hired to do a 110-foot mural at a beach 
uh, a beach snack club. And it had to be all kind of beach themed. So it was people surfing, skimboarding. But I did put some like surfing penguins in there. And, but it was 110 feet long. I did it with my my buddies from college is, uh, to make some extra money. Are you going to submit this short to any festivals or award winning stuff? Um, if we get it done in the right way. Right now I just want to focus on getting it done. And then once it's done, then uh, then we'll look at the next step for it. But I mean, if, if we have the opportunity to submit it to get it to you know get it seen, then obviously we d we want to do that. But visually, I want it to be very simple. It's a very simple story. And I don't think I, I want the animation really to shine. I wanted to I want to go back to classic animation, and so I'm really that's where I'm going to spend my time and money, is really getting in there and spending time on full, subtle, appealing acting, all of that, but really full animation. How do you uh, how do you price your paintings? Um, I price my paintings on de uh, you know, demand, uh, the number of hours that I work on a piece, um, uh, the size, the difficulty, size, you know, there's a lot of the medium, you know, I can charge more for an oil painting than I can for a watercolor painting of the same size for some reason, I don't know why, uh, but that's just how the public perceives it, you know, things like that. But a lot of times it's mainly, I, I, first of all, I don't sell a lot of my originals anymore. I, um, I just keep them. Uh, I do sell a few um, every once in a while. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to sell a lot of my charcoals because they're big and they're just taking up space in my house. And, uh, and I'm usually, you know, because I've been able to build up a following over the years, my my paintings, my medium-sized paintings, will sell in the four to five thousand to ten, you know eight thousand dollar range, and then as they get bigger, they're into the you know fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range. Those are the oil paintings, and then the charcoals, the large charcoals, are usually in the three thousand dollar range. Coming, he's coming along here. I love getting to this stage. Put the painting in? Yeah. And uh, is there any way in TV paint uh, to use your line drawing as a mask, as in a mask over a white layer, so it can save you doing all the filling in? There is. Um, th but this is... Because of the rough, and I might, I, there might be a more efficient way of doing it. There's, there's a, a character paint layer that you can do, where you can just literally touch, the, touch the, uh, touch it, and it'll fill, to the edge of the of the line. Uh, my thing is, I, my, I'm not super clean, uh, and I've got places where the paint can leak out. And they've gotten better about that. You don't have to have your lines completely connected, and it'll still figure it out. Just that I've got a lot of little hair, you know, squiggly hairs and things like that. I think it's just just easier to do it this way, um, and it feels a little more traditional to me for some reason, and I like I like that. For our next live stream, uh, would it be possible to make something that looks uh, like the old Mary Poppins or Roger Rabbit, something that mixes real view and digital painting. Oh, that's interesting. That could be kind of fun. I've done that with other things before, my, some of my creature illustrations, where I've mixed photographs and and, and uh, that one I did of you as an elf. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. Those take a long time to do, but we might be able to do something in a few hours. 
and we've got you know I've got um, uh, another project that I'm working on with Nick and um, it's a book project where I got I've got some illustrations to do with a lot of creatures in them and that's something uh, I'm going to start doing I'll probably do that next week as we get into those uh, as we get into um, the next live streams and uh, we'll share with you guys some of the stuff that I'm doing Boy, it's hot. Yeah, but when I think of what they, then it was like Mary Poppins brought drivers in, like adding animated characters along with live action characters. Oh, animated. Like, animated. Yeah, like implementing. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you just meant a single still image. No. No, I can't do that all in, in just a live stream. Yeah, like that would need to be like either a YouTube clip or. Yeah, a that's a lot course. of work. I can't do that all. In, I can't do that in just a couple of hours. <laughs> that, now, I might be able to, to like, draw. Um, we can, like, actually, I take that back. We might be able to come up with something, right? If I'm just drawing, um, we could come up with something kind of simple. Like, we can film film something ahead of time and plan it out ahead of time that would just say, like, this is the layout, this is the way we're going to animate it into yeah. the scene, and then, then do that. Yeah. It could be done. It could be done. Oh, I did something. I missed something here. Yep, I missed that one. How did I miss that? Oh, I remember. I changed the position of the head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. See that? Got to have an eagle eye for this stuff. <laughs> there we go. Oh. There. Oh, no, that's not it. Right there. There. What's your advice for people who want to do cool things like animate, but can't really take frustration? It seems the more I want something, the less... I like doing it because I'm so emotionally invested. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, dude. Uh, if you're emotionally invested, then then you're going to be into it. I don't know what you're trying to say. And if you're... I don't know. <laughs> Just step if you back, love it, take a then, deep breath. Then stop making excuses. Just do it. <laughs> don't tell me you're getting emotionally frustrated. Just do it. Just, that's telling me you can't you can't take failure. If it's something you love, you got, and you got to learn it. I you know I I've failed so many times doing this work, but I love it. So do it because you love it, and just get in there and do it. Don't make excuses for it. Uh, do you find Swan Princess uh, to be a good animation feature? Uh, I think it's okay. I really like Jeff Bridges, and he's so he's so deadpan. Wait, Jeff Bridges was in Swan Princess? If I'm thinking of the right one, the old one, right? The Swan Princess? Wasn't that old back in the 70s or 80s? Or no, was Swan it? Princess was like 90s. Oh, was it? Maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Then if I, if, I might be thinking of a different one. I think, I think you're mistaking it for The Last Unicorn. The Last Unicorn, that's, that's what I was one. thinking of, yeah. That's Jeff Bridges, right? Yeah, that that one, uh, he played as the prince. Yeah, and it's just so Bridges. weird. But it's something about it I just, I just love. But no, this movie was uh, Swan Princess. Oh, that's right. Eh, I, I, I was kind of meh on it. Is that Warner Brothers? Yeah, I do not know. I think it was Warner Brothers. So we're slowly getting there. I know this isn't the most exciting <laughs> stream to watch, but <laughs> hey, I figured I'd share my process with you. Production done by Nest Entertainment. 
and uh, company was Rich Animation Studios. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, distributed by New Line Cinema and Columbia TriStar. Gotcha. I remember Rich Studios. This movie was released in 1994. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Everybody wanted to get into animation at that point. Yeah. After Lion King came out, animation studios popped up like weeds. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, we were getting, you know, animators were getting phone calls left and right trying to get recruited. It was like sports. We were getting recruited by all kinds of places. Fox was calling me and. And if, if if someone found out that you were talking to another studio, then the, C, the, the head of the studio that you're at Disney would get involved. Like I, I had Michael Eisner call me because he wanted to make sure that I wasn't leaving to go to Fox. And seriously, oh, oh yeah, all kinds of crazy. It got really wow. crazy back then. <laughs> wow, I know. So like after People like were so making really big contract deals and. It was insane, but it was also, I mean, that was part of what killed uh, 2D animation. It got so expensive to make because people were making such huge contracts. We, we, you know, we all, we basically bit ourselves right out of jobs uh, because the studios couldn't keep up. I remember when we were making Brother Bear, which was later on, and this was even after some of the uh, some of the uh, cutbacks. We were still burning almost a million dollars a week. A week. A week. Jesus. Just in salaries of people working on the film. It was costing us almost a million dollars a week. Jeez. Uh, would you ever direct a live action film since you have already? Uh, since you already have di uh, directional experience uh, on big projects. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to do a live action film. And I've got ideas for, for a couple. Uh, I just don't... It's not something I'm pursuing. Right now, I want to get this done. This l sweet little project that we've got right here. This little eight minute short that's been the bane of my existence because I want to get it done so badly and we always get sidetracked been trying to get this done for almost three years now once I get this done then we're gonna see where we go after that but this is gonna be a sweet little project is um is the pencil tool the only tool in TV paint that you use uh, uh, to make fine lines uh, no, there's others. You have ink lines and all kinds of stuff, but I, I mainly use a pencil tool because I like that it looks like a pencil test. It looks like old, old, you know, old school animation. Old school. Old school, the only way to do it. Hey, I watched Princess Mononoke yesterday with Gloria and Vedanta. Oh, you did? Yeah, I haven't watched that in so long. Me either. Still good, huh? Still good after all these years. <laughs> oh, I think that's uh, Princess Mononoke is probably like one of the most mature anime features that uh, Hayao Miyazaki made. Oh yeah, watch that movie and just look at the backgrounds. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, sure. Those are some great backgrounds, dearie. I'm telling you, man. And also the 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 characters themselves just beautiful. Well the character animated. count, first of all, the number of characters in there mm -hmm. is insane. Um the consistency uh, there's so much to be in awe of on that film. I keep forgetting that Billy Bob Thornton was one of the what voiced one of the characters in that in, in that the, movie. Well, in the the, the American English, the English, English version. Yeah, I didn't watch the, the English version. Huh? We watched the Japanese version. Oh, you did? Yeah. Ah.
that animation of the demon hog, the giant white demon oh, yeah. hog with all the <laughs> yeah, with all the little worms. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't imagine doing that. A lot of work, but in the end, it made a lot of kids terrified. Yeah, Radomize me on YouTube asks, "Will you ever come to Hawaii? I'll pay." Done. <laughs> I was just in Hawaii. I was in Hawaii in March. I was in the Big Island. I was in Kona. Whatever happened to Art Story with Chuck Williams? Art Story, we pitched it all over. Um, we pitched it to pretty much every major studio. And uh, we've had a really hard time. Right now it's sitting on the back burner. We've still got it. It's still something I want to make. Um, we couldn't get anybody to pick it up. And it was very frustrating because um, uh, so many of the studios either had something like that in production already or in development, which is something we ran into a lot of, or uh, they felt it was too like like you're giving an art lesson. And and there was one one executive we couldn't even pitch we couldn't even pitch the story. They wouldn't even hear it because. They just assume that's what it was. When in reality, it's a story about a, a, a grandson and his grandfather, you know. And it's the the art world is the vehicle that you know through the that the story is told. And uh, it's that kind of thinking that you know, that's part of the frustration I run into with dealing with executives in Hollywood. It's one of the reasons I left. Is this pompous attitude that they think they know what something is before they even hear what it is, and. Um, and the fact is, nobody knows what's going to hit. I mean, obviously, a good story is what's going to hit. But, um, you know, it's everybody thinks that, you know, they follow trends. And so few are actually trendsetters. And it's the trendsetters that, that are successful. That are willing to, you know, that, that go out on a limb and make a risk and try something new. Look at James Cameron. Look what he's done. You know? He he got so frustrated with executives he funded his own. There we go. YouTube question. I want to see your pencil brush set. Can you zoom in? My pencil brush set? I'm just uh this is um I've got it set to um the felt tip up in the upper right here. Felt tip, and then the only thing I've changed is I just changed the size, which is over here. And I changed the opacity to 100%. So that's all I've done. I mean, I can... Is it this? No, that's not it. I don't know where it is. So I... I uh, my... Uh, I can't find my... Um, my little blow-up icon. So... But the... Yeah, right now it's just... I've just got it set to a big, fat felt tip setting. There's nothing special about this brush... I just wanted to uh, fill. <laughs> this is an interesting question. Sure. If you were to fight in the in a wizard's duel like the one in Sword of the Stone, uh, what animals would you want to turn into? <laughs> you remember that scene? I do. It's pretty cool. I want a bird. A bird? Some kind of bird. A big bird. I've got. To, I want to be able to fly. I love the squirrels, though. The squirrels were awesome. <laughs> uh, a bird. Definitely a bird. Zoom tool should be in the top bar in the Mac main menu. I know. It's not there right now. I got to... Uh, for some reason, it's not there. Uh, da, 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 da. I can go over here. Let me do this, Nick. Nick, Nick, Nick. I was trying to blow that off because I was trying to move on. Let me do this. Zoom tool. Zoom. There it is. Oh no, that's zoom. Uh, what was that? What was that tool you called? Where it blows things up. Oh, um, uh, Mouse Pro. Mouse Pro. Or Cursor Pro. Cursor Pro. 
There it is. Aha! Oh, I knew it. Here's a frog. There, now it popped up. Boop. So here, let me, let me get rid of this. What button do I push? Uh, options? Options or, or command. Oops. No, that's not what I want. Uh, try um, option. If I push the, the, the uh, if I push the mouse? No. Uh, try shift. Control, shift, nothing. What is it, Nick? <sighs> what was that? Uh, did you try command already? Command. No. Forget what it is. Spacebar. No. Option. Option. It's not option. I've already done all those. Oh, function. Fn. Try that one. There it is. There it Look is. At that. <laughs> it's the only one I didn't touch. So here you go over on the left. Um, it's set for schmear. 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 Uh, the size is 39%. I don't know why it's at a percentage. Um, and then the opacity is 100%. The only, that's the only, the, those are the only two things I've changed on here. Normally this brush is normally set at 10% and the size I think is 21%. So I've just increased the size and I've, inc and I've changed the opacity. So that's where that is. Just to let you know. Just to inform you. Whoops, what did I do? See? I needed that. There we go. I'm going to turn that off because that really bugs me. There Very we go. Buggy. I'm actually going to increase the size of that just a little bit. Working out good. So slowly getting through here. We're over halfway. I'm gonna finish this out, I think. Oh yeah, we're over halfway. Cranking. Any good places to watch animals for animation study? Um, my zoo doesn't have a lot of variety. Uh, I know animation studios will sometimes bring animals in or take trips depending on the size. Um, if I were you, use documentaries. If you can't find a good zoo, the next best, and you can't be there you know, in, the, in the wild, um, documentaries work great. Uh, I, I watched a ton of Arctic documentaries and drew right off the screen as I was watching it's for polar bears. Another thing you can do, this is really cool. Find, it, but it, it's it's dependent upon the time of year. But find um, webcams, live webcams, and draw off of those. For instance, uh, in Alaska, during the salmon run at Brooks Falls, they have a live bear cam, uh, and it's usually set up in late July goes through August and you can sit there live and watch the bears catch salmon and um, and the the uh, the camera work is pretty good and so I'll sit there and just draw right off my computer screen watching lot bears live there in Alaska I'm in Florida and uh, and it's pretty cool it works great it works great so that's those are some options for you there's a, there's a few uh, live African webcams that do the same thing that I've, I've used. They're really cool. So, there you go. YouTube question. There's still a chance you'll get into 3D stuff and stream yourself learning it. Uh, probably not. Uh, actually, the, you know, the only 3D thing I can see myself getting into is uh, Mudbox. Really want to get in the Mudbox. Uh, will you come to Austria one day? I'm hoping so. Um, 
Right now we don't have any plans on going to Austria, but I'd like to go at some point. That'd be a really fun trip. Yeah, Austria's beautiful. Oh, I bet. I've seen so many pictures, so and so much footage of uh, of Austria. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. See what I did there? There is no. I for some reason I forgot to draw the line across the back when I was doing the in between, but I just filled it in and let the white be the line. Oh, saving. I love that autosave. Man, before I, I started using the autosave, I remember I went a day and a half, two, no, two days of animating and it crashed and I lost everything. Two days worth? Yep. Wow. Yeah, that was an annoying. That was annoying. You must have lost your mind at that point. I really did. I threw a few things. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> One of them was almost a computer out the window. That computer? No, not this one. This is when I lived in Stewart. Oh. Uh, uh, what's the difference between Mudbox and ZBrush? Oh, no, sorry, not Mudbox, ZBrush. For some reason, I always confuse the two. ZBrush is the one I want to learn. Ah. Yeah, I had an earlier question just before that saying, what about ZBrush and what do you learn that? Yeah, ZBrush. That's the one I want to learn. That's the one that's pretty much the standard. That's what that's the one everyone's using, I'm assuming. I don't know much about it. I just know that everyone I've talked to has said it's pretty once you get the hang of it, it's pretty user friendly and everybody that knows me says I'd love it. And so I really want to try it. Is it Mudbox the software that's made for like a, a CG modeling? Yeah. And so is ZBrush. Oh, ZBrushes? Yeah. Oh. <coughs> but, but, but. Like, I kept on thinking that a ZBrush was like some sort of like uh, special brush plugin for uh, Photoshop. No. So I'm getting there. We're going, we're moving pretty quick here, actually. Getting pretty close to being able to export this baby. Have you tried using TV Paint's uh, filled stroke? Basically, you draw an outline or shape and it's automatically filled with color. If you click and hold on the stroke in the top left corner, a drop down menu will appear uh, with that option. It saved me a ton of time with coloring. It's best done on its own animation layer uh, below the outline layer. Just another uh, method option. I love that idea. Repeat it again, Dustin. Uh, you draw an outline or shape and it's automatically filled with color. If you click and hold on the stroke in the top top left corner, a drop down menu will appear with that option. Click and hold on a, on what? On the stroke in the top left corner. The stroke on the top left corner. I mean, you know, I'm going to do it offline. I'll figure it out offline. All right. Because uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what about Blender? In school, we uh, they were teaching me Blender, but I had I had heard wonders of ZBrush years prior. Yeah, uh, I don't know about Blender. I just know ZBrush is the one that everybody tells me I need to try. I tend to listen to the people that know me and know the software. You know, that's that's how I discovered TV Paint. I, there are several people that knew my method, knew the way I worked, and said, you know, because I didn't know whether to get Toon Boom or TV Paint or what. And they said, no, you're going to like TV paint. They, and, the, and they were right. I fell in love with it. How do I know when there are streams for membership viewers only? Um, we haven't had any uh, lately. But we will let, if, you, if you're a member, we will let you know. And it's something we've been talking about lately uh, to do. Um, 
we just haven't gotten to it yet. Sorry. You okay? Yeah, I was just having to twist a certain way. And also, I haven't mentioned this in a while. If you guys are latecomers, uh, speaking of uh, exclusive stuff, uh, August 3rd and 4th, I know I, for those of you that have been listening, I know I sound like a broken record, but August 3rd and 4th in Orlando, I'm doing my first master class, and um, we're really excited about it. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, my career, story structure, character design, animation, uh, uh, a lot of different things that I've been able to do over the last 30 years of my career, and I'm going to be talking about it live at the Repertory Theater in Orlando. And uh, it's right next door to the Art Museum, Orlando Art Museum, next door to the Orlando Science Center. A lot of really cool stuff on location there. And um, uh, uh, the, um, the fact that you know we're gonna be doing it live is really, really cool. It's the first time we've done anything like this. Um, uh, in a few weeks, we are gonna be in uh, England at the Peck, at Peckforton Castle for a week uh, teaching a painting class there but this is the first time that we're actually doing a master class op you know open to 300 people the first 300 people that sign up and uh, um, and it's like I said it's gonna be great we uh, we're super excited about it and uh, if you want to check out more information on it go to creatureartteacher.com backslash Orlando 2019 and it'll have all the information on it. It has the schedule, it has the pricing, has everything. And another cool thing, if you're a student or a teacher, you can save up to 50 bucks off the tickets. So uh, check that out because I think um, I think it's going to be a great time and I love doing live events. This is something, you know, we just got back from Europe doing uh, a month of live events there and almost all of our events were sold out over there and it was really really great we did a couple with some other artists uh, and then I did a whole bunch on my own and um, uh, they were great and it, it really inspired us actually that's the reason why we're doing this in August uh, it inspired us to say you know what why don't we do something domestically we haven't really done anything like that and so that's what we decided to do and so our first one we just decided to do right in our backyard. So August 3rd and 4th is going to be my first master class and uh, live with you guys here in the States. So check it out, creatureartteacher.com backslash Orlando 2019 and there'll be all kinds of information about it there. And once again, if you're a student or a teacher, you can get up to 50 bucks off of uh, the, the weekend admission. Uh, would you move to Mars if you could, or would you just stay here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think I, I think I would stay here. There's not a whole lot to do in Mars. <laughs> you know, there's a lot more variety of landscape here in the good old Earth than there is in Mars. So I don't think I would move to Mars. Do you stay up, uh, stay up late drawing at night? Uh, not usually. I usually stop drawing by about 6 o'clock and then I'm done. And uh, I watch a little television, watch a movie or two, and I go to bed. Or once or twice a week, or three times a week, or maybe five times a week. <laughs> I sit out back with Vedanta and Dustin, have a couple drinks, and, and, go, head to off, and go to bed. <laughs> Uh, the person I was talking about the uh, the, the filler with the uh, using the lines. Uh huh. Um, so I think he meant just hold the mouse uh, key down on the tool you're already using, so it gives you an option to uh, uh, air. Oh, gotcha. Awesome. 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 Whoops, dog got it. Why, uh, um, why did you guys use uh, a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande uh, Jata painting when Coda's painting the rock wall? 
at the very end. Oh, uh, we just it was we just thought it was a nice little masterpiece to show him working. It was just something we happened to pick. Actually, I didn't even pick it. I think it was the art director that picked it. It was one of his favorite paintings. Person asking that question, were you just trying to flex your artistic no, your, your <laughs> art history, your, uh, you, the, you know your paintings? Were you just trying to show off a little bit? Maybe a little. <laughs> you two guys look like such nice people. Having you in my living room every time I paint starts to feel like we're all one big family. Oh, isn't that sweet? I think I, I, uh, we're definitely a big family here on this side. Big happy family. It makes me so happy. 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 We are getting so close. Oh, come on. Stop saving. Well, you got to save. I gotta... Do you prefer to paint each frame that way instead of using uh, a lasso selected fill? Yep. Oh, really? <laughs> Okay, then. I do. It's just for me, even with lasso, I'm going to miss spots around the edges, and i got to go back in and touch them up. And with this, it's just quicker. So I can't afford it this round, but do you think you'll be teaching another master class in Orlando or possibly Tampa? Yes. Yes, I do. And there's a, a, um, there's a, a friend of mine that has... Um, uh, some exotic animals down in South Florida that I've touched on the idea of doing some master animal drawing classes with him and uh, there's something there that we I'd like to set up down the road down in Naples Florida see the one that has like the uh, isn't isn't his place a zoo or no. is it or no, it's just, uh, just private. It's private. Oh. I don't want to bring up the name yet because we haven't figured it out yet. So I'll let everyone know after, after we work it out. After the negotiations. No, just we got to work it out. I got nothing from Nick. Nothing. And I am fresh out myself. Yeah, I think we're losing people. We're losing interest. We're losing them. <laughs> we're losing them. Well, we've been at it. I've been, I've been, I've been, basically working in a coloring book for two hours. What I need is more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pick up the energy, baby. Come on, Dustin, give it to me. You got to get the questions. Come on, there. give them to me. Give me the questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Christopher Walken. <laughs> These questions are great, although it could use a little more cowbells. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. That's why I like about these questions, man. As I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. YouTube question. How do you create a design for a character that appears flat, but is also animatable, dimensional at the same time? Like the characters in Mulan or UPA short films, for instance. That's really funny you brought that up because we just did a video for YouTube. Uh, Dustin just finished editing it. We just shot it yesterday on how to draw Yao. And I talked about exactly that subject, which is... You know, thinking you're creating a flat character that's dimensional. Uh, it's not easy, and a lot of times you can only get them to work from certain angles. Uh, but the the goal, obviously, is to get them to work from any angle. And um, and I would cheat, you know, here and there. I'd make them a little more dimensional than they should be, you know, at certain places where I'm turning them or whatever, just to bridge a gap between a couple of key poses. But it's uh, it's that's a really good question. It's it's something that's difficult, um, uh, but um, it's uh, it's not impossible. Um, so yeah, Mulan was like that. I'm trying to think what else was like that. Um, yeah, Mulan was probably the most 
kind of flat, flat-ish design. Uh, it was it was difficult, and uh, not everyone stuck to it, but I tried to stick to it as much as I could, and then I've. Uh, but mostly, you know, you'll you'll notice as the as we worked on into the production, our characters got more and more kind of dimensional. We couldn't help it. They just ended up getting more dimension to them. Uh, question. Are there animation studios in Florida? Where outside of Cali do you have animation studios? Also, can you give tips on how to do compositing backgrounds and animation? Um, okay, those are big questions. Uh, I don't know what studios are in Florida other than my good friend Dom Carolla who has uh, 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 premise entertainment uh, here in Orlando. I don't know the animation studios. I've been out of the loop for a long time and I haven't really uh, followed up. I know there's a lot of studios outside of California. I just can't tell you where. Um, and as far as uh, tips on how to compo uh, on how to do compositing backgrounds and animation, that's uh, I don't, I, no, I can't give you tips on that right now. I just, um, there's a lot, it's not something I can, it's not something I can just answer right off the cuff, like this is how you do it. You know, the, the, the compositing of your backgrounds really d is dependent upon what's happening with your characters, the layout, everything. There's a lot of different factors that affect the compositing. You know, this shot right here, this simple shot of just this bear walking across the snow, there's going to be four different layers to this video, or to this shot. It's, uh, you know, we've got the foreground snow uh, on the ground, then we've got the bear walking behind that, then we've got the background behind that, and then I'm going to have falling snow over the top of that. And uh, that's, all that's going to be composited together. So, um, yeah, there's just, a, there's there's so many variables that go into how everything gets composited. Um, it's not something that I can answer right off the cuff. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, how many tickets are left for for Orlando? Uh, for Orlando? I don't know, actually, off the bat, off the top of my head. Nick, do the thing. <laughs> uh, will you? I know we have a. Uh, there's there's still a fair number out there. Uh, left to go. I think we've got. Well, I can't remember. I can't remember. Can't remember. No. I can't remember. Uh, will you ever uh, come back to Ringling College? Probably not in the near future. Uh, why do you erase the colors uh, each slide? Would it be easier to just adjust what is already there? Just curious. A, erase the color? Oh no! Uh, because I, I, I um, I'd be erasing and uh, drawing, and it's easier for me. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time, so I'm sounding a little drunk. <laughs> but uh, it's easier for me to start fresh than trying to find all the places that I need to erase. Um, it's just. If it wasn't, if he was moving a lot less, then it would be easier to do the what you're talking about. But in this case, it's easier for me to just do it this way. Like there, uh, right there. Why is that one off? Something got shifted there. That's right. Oh, this was on. This one was on eights before. That's why. I've uh, hit. I. I've hit, uh, that's where it starts to shift a little bit. Okay. I got it now. You got it now? Yeah. See, I'd have to erase all along. Let me see. I'll show you. I'll erase, erase, erase. I've got to erase. That's all good. Fine and dandy there. Um, maybe, maybe this will be better. Clear it out there. And then now i got to go back and fill in. Oop, I went over the line there. See to me, it's not any. It's not that much quicker. There we go. Got that. I gotta get that. That. Oh, an erase right there. By the way, Tim Hodge says, "Hey, Aaron." Hey, Tim. 
Tim Hodge. Speaking of Tim Hodge, Tim Hodge is on the on the watching right now, and he has created a brand new course for us that we're very excited about. And uh, he shows his ink drawing techniques, how he creates some of his drawings uh, and animal characters. Yeah, doggone it. I'm sorry I'm talking and going outside the lines at the same time. Um, he's going to be our next course. Tim Hodge, we used to work together at Disney years ago. Uh, he's a great story artist and basically a, a great all-around artist. Let me take back uh, take that back. And uh, he um, recently came down and hung out with us and we did a course together on uh, with his watercolor and ink technique and how he creates characters. And it came out really really cool and uh, we're getting ready to release that in the next week or two and actually the the pre-orders for that are going to be happening I think today or tomorrow we're very excited sorry I'm having a hard time talking today it's all good so hey it's all good it's all are you talking good, like hey. Matthew McConaughey again all right all right all right <laughs> no, somebody says, Dustin, ask this question in a Walken voice. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Have you seen the documentary Waking Sleeping Beauty? <laughs> and was it accurate? <laughs> yes, it was accurate. Yes, I've seen it. It was very good. <laughs> Probably could have done better in an Arnold voice. <laughs> <laughs> Do the Arnold voice. <laughs> <laughs> that just makes me laugh right there. Have you seen the documentary Waking Sleeping Beauty? And was it accurate? <laughs> it was accurate, yes. <laughs> Could you do a walkthrough on the process of making hippo funk? Um, well, I'm not going to pull it up right now. Uh, I'll do that. I'll tell you what, how about I do that in a future stream? Because um, right now I want to focus on getting this. But I can definitely take you through the process. Uh, the Hippo Funk cartoon took me a month to make, I can tell you that, and um, it really started with designing the character, and then once I got him designed, um, I started doing my research on how I wanted him to move, and I just fell in love with a lot of the Fresh Prince stuff from uh, Will Smith, and so I just grabbed a bunch of clips from Will Smith dancing and studied them, watched them over and over and over again, and then I did the animation of, of the hippo. Well, actually, the next thing I did was find the music. And um, and after finding the music, I sat... I, I'm giving you the step-by-step -step after all. <laughs> but after I found the music, I sat down and started figuring out the, the uh, timing for the beats, the how many frames... Uh, for the beats and once I had that figured out then I was able to figure out the movement you know the rhythmic movement of uh, the hippo now I can go in I think on this one and kind of just touch it up because these in-betweens get really really close did you ever do a drawing with Sanguine S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E no. Is it Sanguine? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, red Chalk or Conte Crayon? C O N T. Well, I've, I've used, uh, yeah, I've used Conte before. Conte. But what's. Is that, how you, is that how you pronounce it? Sanguine? 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 Sure. Sanguine? Do, you, do you know how to pronounce it? I don't. Yeah, I'm not the only one this time. No. There we go. What is the size of your files at the end? This one's not too bad. My files get pretty big though. You know, like a couple of terabytes? Yeah. <laughs> Did you like Aslan from Narnia? Uh, yeah, I did actually. I think, um, I think the lions in the new Lion King are gonna really be even better.
but I did like him for the for the time that he was animated. I thought it was good. I think I think the technology has gotten better. No, oh. so Tim Hobbs just corrected both of us. It's San Gwen. San it's Gwen. a color from Con- Conta Graham. There you go. Thank you, Tim. Tim Hodge and I were just in Moscow together. Off in Moscow. Yes, we were in Russia. YouTube question. Just started animation. Is there a general rule of thumb when to use twos instead of ones? Is there a sort of eyeball when something is too choppy on twos? Yeah, there is. I mean, it's if it looks choppy, then you should be on ones. If it doesn't, then you're okay on twos. That's basically it. You know, anything uh, slow acting, slow action, uh, you can get a lot, get away with on twos. And you'll you'll over time you'll get a sense for what works and doesn't. But basically, if it looks choppy, and you have the budget and the time, put it on ones. If it doesn't, then you're okay on twos. I mean, it's really, if it looks right, it is right. If it looks bad, then fix it. That's really what it comes down to. After you animate the whole snow bear on TV paint, uh, will you have to put it all together on another film editing software? Or could you do it all on TV paint? You can do it all on TV paint. And we're, that's what we're currently trying to uh, figure out. Is I haven't edited in TV paint or, or cut in TV paint yet. Um, currently I'm putting everything that I've got, putting it together in uh, Premiere. That's my editing software that I like to use. Really? That's mine, too. Yeah, imagine that. YouTube question. How do you keep the style the same during a long project? Whenever I work on something that takes me longer than a month or so, the style starts changing. Well, you really got to make sure that you, you know the rules of your style. So if you can verbalize the rules of your style, then, then it's easier to keep it on style. Because, you know, once you can verbalize what those rules are, you can, you can make sure that you're following them, right? Hello, I just got here. What do you have so far? <laughs> Hello, I just got here. What do you have so far? Yep. Well, we've got uh, we've got some snow bear getting colored in, and uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm using the other person's advice that said, "Hey, why don't you just fill and erase, save some time?" That one did save me some time because these have gotten close together. Yeah. I gotta make sure I don't go outside those edges. There, right there. See that? That's a tiny little change. Just a tiny one. All right, Sarabi needs more love as a Disney queen. I agree. Sarabi was awesome. So she was definitely a strong mother. I like the way she stood up to Scar. Yeah. What is the worst animated film you ever saw? <laughs> <laughs> um, the worst. Black Cauldron's up there. Uh, oh, man. There's a lot of bad ones out there. Honestly, I would say the, the straight-to-DVD of uh, Tarzan 2. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the animation for it was so bad like I know like they didn't have much of a budget or anything but even then like it it like it's hard to explain no it's not if it's bad it's bad there you go yeah but bad story can can make good animation seem bad too Back on that question really quick on how do we keep the style the same, one of the other things we did at Disney was uh, the art director would put together an entire style book 
really outlining the entire style of the movie and what the rules are. And we would all have that book. Even as animators, some of us had that book. And we would just, you know, we were there to make sure that it all stayed, stayed consistent. He's starting to move a little quicker now, so I'm just going to paint him in. Got him that far. Boy, we're getting close. We're getting really close. You know, I just wrote, uh, in reply to the person asking about the changing style, I like to write notes on my character sheets, uh, such as a, uh, such as hair must always look like this, and so on. Well, that's good. That's a good note. That's a good uh, thing to do. Complex, visually complex films. It's it's uh, it can be pretty difficult to kind of nail all the the rules down. But it's something that really needs to be done in order for it to play, you know, consistent. Did you guys like the scene with Penelope in Wreck It Ralph uh, breaks the internet? What are your thoughts on that? Um, exactly which scene are you talking about? Yeah, there's a whole bunch um, of scenes. There's there's a lot of scenes, but um, oh, with the Disney princesses, he just corrected it. Oh, oh, with oh, the oh, Disney oh. princesses. I loved it, and it's actually I thought there there was an earlier version that I saw when I was visiting Disney, and they showed me that sequence, and I thought it, the earlier version was even funnier. They had to go in and change a few things. Yeah, wasn't like the earlier in the earlier version like Jasmine allergic to cats or something? Yeah, she's allergic to to Raja, <laughs> but her cough is like this guttural like. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> It was really funny. Yeah, I really think they did a really good job of adapting the 2D animated characters into 3D CG. Like, yeah. Do you, Do you think the same way? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, my 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 favorite scene of Wreck It Ralph is is with the Disney princesses but when they're when they're saving Ralph <laughs> big strong man in need of rescuing oh yeah that, that whole sequence was just amazing and I couldn't stop laughing throughout that entire sequence Aaron have you seen Emperor's New Groove of course I have yes I have seen it it was being made while I was there and if so what do you think of it I miss super funny animated movies with a dry sense of humor I agree. I think it was hilarious, and uh, uh, I really loved the, the fact that it didn't take itself too seriously, and it really was fun. It was a really funny movie. Is this background the final version? Looks nice. Yes, this is. Uh, I, I might change it down the road, but stylistically, I'm trying to keep a very loose approach to the backgrounds. If you look at um, like the the classic uh, Winnie the Pooh and some of the uh, um, Hundred and One Dalmatians, stylistically, though, you know, with the line quality and the and the background quality, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. How do you feel about Cinderella having ears in Rick and Ralph too? I thought she always had ears. Yeah, I didn't know that she didn't have ears. So many comments. Look at Snowbear looking all cute. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, hopefully, you're, uh, there's a few shots here that you're not going to see until I, until we release the the teaser, and hopefully it's going to melt your heart. We got a few more shots to animate, but I'm, I'm not going to share them with you until we release it. This is the only one I'm going to share with you. Sorry, comments. I, I love Emperor's New Groove. I've watched a thousand watched a thousand times and still crack 
crack of the jokes. It's such a great movie. It really is. I love Kronk. <laughs> yeah. Tony Bancroft did Kronk. A beater. <laughs> yeah. Now, Tony Bancroft, for those of you who don't know, he did Kronk. He also did Pumbaa in The Lion King. Oh. And was co-director of Mulan. I was like, oh, I feel the power. Oh, yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Dindle was the director, and uh, I think he's a genius. Yeah. yeah. yeah my favorite character was, all, was always Krong, just, just of how, like, he's this big muscle guy, but he's dumbheaded, but he has the warmest heart out yeah. of everybody. <laughs> uh, squeaker, squeak, squeak. Uh, squeakity, uh, squeak, squeaker, uh, squeak, squeak. <laughs> That guy at the diner, he didn't pay his check. <laughs> you remember all the parts. Oh, yeah. Well, somebody's recommending a lone moose antler in the background somewhere. Well, at one point, he's going to be hanging out in the, in the rib cage of a whale. How do you think, what do you think of that? What do you think of them apple, huh? <laughs> I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Oops. Harumph. Ah, in the original, Cinderella's hair covered her ears. It was a popular style in the 50s when it was made. Oh. Thank you, Tim Hodge, for that... Uh, is that Tim again, that flexing Tim again. his know-how? That was Tim flexing his know-how. Thank you, Tim, for that information. Yeah, I never really noticed it, although I haven't really seen that movie in a long time. I need to take another look at that. So close, so close, and yet so far. Oh, man. Come on. Did Aladdin, uh, the animation, have uh, 3D parts in it, like the cave scene? Uh, what was used for 3D back then? Oh, I don't know what was used for 3D. It was so uh, new. And um, I don't know what software they were using, or hardware, or whatever. Wasn't the lava in Aladdin 3D? Because at least that was CG. Um, I don't... I think so. Yeah, actually, that, no, it wasn't the um, the or it may have been actually that and the uh, the pillar that Aladdin gets uh, shot off of the mount up the mountains to. Yeah, when it was rolling down the mountain, I think that was. Yeah, this is CG. all ninety one. You know, it's yeah. really early in the CG. It was like early CG, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that was CG. I don't know. I might be wrong. Believe it or not, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, I'm so close to getting this done. Do you plan to sell any merch with Snow, Snow Bear? I'd love a plushie or a pin. You know what? I think we are going to do those. Um, once again, the goal is to get it done first. And then uh, once we're done, then uh, we'll let we'll let the demand kind of drive that. But I, I can't imagine that we won't have some kind of uh, posters or pins or something available. Because uh, I think he's we're, we're going to share the process the whole time we're making this. And I'm hoping that people fall in love with him before we even release it. That's my goal. Nick says it was very likely soft homage three D. That which was the standard before Maya. You know what? That sounds right, Nick. Soft homage. As in soft image. The person that was um that was talking about uh Krong. Yeah. Thing of 
when we were joking around the, the with the squeak squeaker uh, squeak squeak. Um, so right, so that's what my tattoo says. It has a squirrel with squeak squeaking behind him. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. So close. <clears throat> I can't decide if it's faster to just to, to erase away and fill in the gaps or just start over. I can't decide. That one I forgot to put his belly hair on. Oh, I'm going to let it go for now. Somebody else comments, I love to when Kronk was uh, trying to dispose Cusco and he's singing his own song. So funny. His own score? His own score. The yeah. da -da, da -da, da -da -da. But my personal favorite part is when he's first talking to his uh, shoulder angel and shoulder devil. Oh, yeah. Raise the number two. Look what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my first time experiencing this, so uh, be gone or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. I really want a meter. <laughs> Come on. This movie has a really good taser. <laughs> well, there we go. Are you going to be going back in and shading later? No, I don't think this one's going to be shaded. Uh, first of all, he's super tiny in the shot. And uh, it's all flat light. So I think we're just going to get away with uh, not having to shade him on this shot. The next two shots will have shadows. But you're not going to see those shots, not till it's done. But we should have this teaser done by next week. That's our goal. We'd like to have it done before we go to England, which is on the 5th of July. We're looking forward to that. Old Ronnie Williford and myself and Nick, and Dustin, and our families, we're all headed off to... Cheshire, England, where we're going to be staying at the Peckforton Castle and teaching painting for three days or four days. Oh, I need to find my passport. Dustin hasn't know. found his passport yet. Oh, did you look in the spot where you thought it was? Yep, it was not there. Oh, no. <laughs> I might be doomed, I tell you. Doomed. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, my plan is to... Uh, Take a day over the weekend and just search everywhere. Search everywhere because we already got your ticket, dude. If I don't find it by Monday, I might need to uh, get it expedited. 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 Do you like the series Steven Universe? I don't know what that is. I don't know that it, what that is either. I don't know. I might like it. Sounds good. Anything with the universe in it, I like. The universe. The universe is a really big place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try the junk drawer. That's where I found mine. I would if I had one. <laughs> His whole house is a junk drawer. It kind of is. <laughs> I walked over there the other day and I found four. Was not, it third? not the other day. It was not like the other a, day. It was, it was a while. month ago. Okay, but there was what fifteen pizza boxes stacked up on the. I on your got stove. rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta eat something other than pizza, my man. I do. I eat pizza rolls. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I was joking. I know, but you're an idiot. <laughs> as long as it makes you laugh, I'll be as much of an idiot as I want. <laughs> <laughs> so close. I'm getting him to animate right off the page here. Have you seen Adventure Time? I have. I've seen Adventure Time a few times. It's a fun show. What is it? 
Uh, Adventure Time is an animated series. I, if I remember right, it's on Adult Swim? I think it's on Adult Swim. But it's, um, it's in a way similar to that of, um, Rick and Morty, but without the, without the crazy violence or anything. Oh, gotcha. Just, uh, outlandish adventures, you know? Yeah. Done. Boom. Why eat anything other than pizza and burgers? They have all the food groups in one meal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and also enough fatness for a heart attack. Truth. Well, all right. View. Fit. Let's just play this back real quick, see if it looks like it's crawling. It's going to play really slow. Oh, something. I just saw something there. It didn't look right. Right through. Right there. I missed that. You see that? Ah. See what the trained eye can give you? You missed a spot. I you did. could use a, a little, little more combo. Nolan Taylor asks. Can you do your best Christopher Walken impression? <laughs> Not me. I can't I'm doing do mine <laughs> right now. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> You're an idiot. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's see it again. The nose I need to go back and do. I'll get that later. So far, so good. Good. Good, good, good. It feels good. I like it. So there we go. Uh, it's playing back so slow. You're from Florida, right? What part? I am, well, I'm from all over. I, I live in, uh, currently I live in DeLand. DeLand, Florida. Florida. Um, Just north of Orlando. I've lived all over Florida. Can you do Morgan Freeman? No, I cannot. And uh, can you do Al Pacino? Um, <sighs> a little bit, no. not a whole lot. If the... The, uh, the lines I do know in Al Pacino form are not appropriate for yeah. our... Uh, well, I got a YouTube what question. Watch. What are my thoughts on 2D animated movies of DreamWorks? Sinbad and the Prince of Egypt are my top five best animated movies I've ever seen. I love, I, you know, a lot of those, we all work together at some point or another. Uh, the director of the Prince of Egypt was the head of story on The Lion King. Uh, so... Uh, you know, a lot of Brenda Chapman, and she she went on to direct Brave, and so we've all kind of jumped around from studio to studio, and uh, I I love I love the two D movies from from DreamWorks, and do I watch Rick and Morty? I wouldn't say I watch them, but I've seen it and I love it. I love Rick and Morty. So, but we're gonna wrap it up. It's been two. What is it? Been two and a half hours. So um, that's how we color a character. Man, he's really slowing down. But uh, this is how we color a character. Um, this is a little sample of Snow Bear and what he's going to look like. And um, I hope you guys are getting interested because we're really excited about this project. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so we're going to get going. I'm going to be back again on Tuesday. Uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you learned something here today. Uh, today was a lot of fun. I enjoyed just sitting down and shooting the breeze with you guys and answering your questions. Remember, I've got my master class coming up August 3rd and 4th in Orlando and if any of you guys want to participate please go over to our website creatureartteacher.com backslash 
Orlando 2019 and check it out. All of our information is there. Uh, August 3rd and 4th, eight hours a day of great material. We're going to be having a great time and uh, I hope you guys can make it. So um, other than that, uh, thanks again for tuning in and listening to Dustin and I rant and laugh and always have our fun. And uh, with that, put some beauty back into the world because we need it. And Dustin, take it away, my boy. See you guys later. As always, Cowboy Bebop, be good to one another. <laughs> later.